Okay, so my uh, my camera, or the video actually, uh, because I recorded in an MP4 format, it didn't finish correctly and it was useless. So I have to back up here a little bit. Pretend all the guts are in this thing. <laughs> here's, the, here's the board to it. And what I'm doing here is, unfortunately, I have uh, shoulder surgery coming up in a couple days, and I'm not going to be able to play games or anything for a while. And I thought, well, I could maybe make a... Uh, one-handed controller and I saw somewhere that someone took their NES controller and actually put uh, two buttons right here so that they could control the control control the direction here and then do the buttons I thought that's a pretty good idea it's not the most comfortable but it was a good idea but right now if you watch any of my other videos you'll notice I do a lot of Game Gear I have a lot of Game Gear cartridges and I have all of them backed up so I figured well even though I'm not using my Retron 5, and, um, I could do, well, actually I could do a Retron 5 still if I use the uh, regular NES controller because that's actually what I use anyways when I do play the um, Game Gear games or Master System or, you know, Game Boys, anything like that that's a two-button system. But I wanted something to plug into my computer, so I'm going with a USB one. Plus, the board is so much smaller uh, than what's in a regular NES system. You can get away with a lot. And... I'm going to just do this with parts I have laying around, but you can already see that there's a common ground here, and then the pads are off to the side, so I'm hoping I can just go right onto there and see what happens. If these buttons don't work, it isn't the end of the world, but it would be kind of nice to actually make this where these buttons still, um, these buttons still function along with the buttons on top, but the buttons on top are the most important. So I went through a bunch of different ideas, and... Turns out, right here where the cord would be, would actually kind of be ideally, but ideal for the spot, but you have this, the spot where the cord goes through and it kind of, when you're pulling on it, it kind of takes all the tension and I don't want to lose that. Uh, then I noticed there is a mounting screw here and these two bridges here, and I probably could get something to lay in there that's solid. So I had an extra, from a Game Boy project that I haven't actually gotten too far and I found this membrane here and I was thinking well maybe that could rest right on there and then I have uh, some different different buttons which then in turn could go on there and that actually would have been pretty uh, pretty cool but then I gotta I gotta mess around with a board up there and stuff like that uh, ideally that's what I'd like to do and maybe if I had more time you know didn't wait to the last second uh, I would do it because I still have to actually go to work tomorrow and um, and get some things done and prepared before I can't use the shoulder. So what I had uh, laying, laying around, because I have way too much garbage laying around, is these momentary buttons. And they're kind of neat. I actually built an, uh, a MAME system once a long time ago out of a miniature iCade. Not the iPad iCade, but an iPhone iCade. It actually turned out pretty good. I even made the coin slot. The uh, There was an and I don't know if it lit up with LED, I don't believe it did, but there's a little red uh, coin thing that looked like the coin thing, and I popped that off, put a momentary switch behind and stuff, and it actually worked good as a coin slot. But, um, so these actually kind of already built for me. Uh, if I grab the board, let me throw it in there, and I know I want it on either side of the screw, I'll have to bend the legs, but that should reach without a problem. So the biggest part will be, well, the biggest part will be not screwing it up, but I'm not good at that part, so that'll probably happen. But hot glue fixes a lot. So the biggest part will be finding the right spot here. Um, since I'll probably redo this one day, because I wouldn't mind redoing it with the proper, proper way of doing it, I'm just going to take this hacksaw blade and just do a slight score here and what that's for is to tell me right where that screw right the can't go right right with that screw right there that way I know I want to be on fairly even sides of both of those and I can't go too far but I already know that the distance between where I scored it on this piece and then where the end of this circle the di outer diameter is that's where this is. So I got to be in between there uh, when I drill. 
So, and I know it'll be hard, it virtually impossible to see on here, but so I got the score there and I got that. So that means I'm lined up here in equal distance, roughly there. I am not, not measuring like I should be. Um, really, I should have some kind of caliper measure this, find the center, because this seam is not the center. Uh, I'm probably just going to use the, uh, use the teeth of this hacksaw blade and then go in half there and then scratch it with my uh, X-Acto knife. And then for for the button, I could drill, but I have really bad luck drilling through plastic. So what I like to use are these step down bits. And I'm actually gonna go all the way down, um, down to here. Just rest this in here so we can rest that in there. And actually, can actually see that the last one is the width of that. Uh, one problem I'm gonna have, and I'm probably gonna solve it with hot glue is, you then have a ring that from, like if you put this in something, from underneath you would put this collar on and you'll see it has it has ridges on it and that would bite in. Uh, that I will not be able to do. I'll get it in there far enough to hold it if I can, if I'm not bumping against the inside wall too much. But I'll try to do that and I'll just probably glue the rest of the way because no matter what I do when I screw that on because I can't come from underneath uh, I can on one side but then I got to snap on the back and I can't go too tight or otherwise I won't get it in there so we're gonna give that a try and see how that goes but like I said hot glue will fix all that so I am going to just gonna do it Worst tape in the world, but I'm hoping it'll hold it together. Um, as I drill in, I'll be a little off of this line because that isn't center, like I mentioned before. But when I do start hitting that, I'm worried it's going to start skipping it out. So I'm going to squeeze it, and of course, you know, bare hands. Well, I'm going to the hospital for surgery in a couple days. They can fix the rest, so let's see how this goes. One thing I got to look at is Yep, that's not going to happen. So that sucks. Um well, let's start the other hole. Worry about it later. So, there's the controls. The only thing I'm worried about is that cord, but really that actually might help. Um, as the cord comes out, if I know my index finger needs to be underneath that, that actually, I mean, it's two, it's two buttons. Um, I did contemplate putting a start and select down here, but I'm just gonna go with this. I actually have a really nice start and select membrane too. So when I redo this, if I redo, I should say, if I redo this, I have a lot of projects that I don't do, but when I redo this, I might put that down there. I wouldn't mind even recessing it a bit, so it's not quite, kind of like this is actually recessed, so but we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try to go a little further. Hmm, really surprised it did not hit there. That is so close. Well, I can't drill any further because my step down bit is actually narrow and long where I really needed a wider and stubbier one. Um, but if you saw my garage, you'd understand why I'm not gonna bother looking for it. So, Actually, I got quite far. I was surprised I didn't hit anything. This one here, yeah, I was hitting hitting that tab there, and I don't I don't want to break anything inside, especially considering I really don't have to. So 
Let's do, let's use a tool improperly. I do not suggest this. And for anyone who says I don't like playing games, I'm doing this so I can play games. Yeah, that's not a good idea. So the nice thing, I'm gonna have to hot glue this. There's no way I'm gonna get the collar in there. But one of the nice things I, is, is all I have to do is keep it from coming up because I'm pushing down on it. But at the same time, pushing down can loosen whatever I'm using to keep it from going up. But this one I got pretty lucky on. That one's pretty tight in there. Let's see if I can close this. No, so I might carve that out a little bit with my X-Acto knife. Or maybe grab, I shall probably grab a round file. That'll work good. As you can see, I gotta really open that other one up more. Um, if you're gonna buy a step down bit and get the stubby one, go to Harbor Freight. They have a two pack, stubby and long, for under 10 bucks, if I remember correctly. It's been years. That's how long they last. Um, when I used to work on cars and th stuff like that, I would get the really high end, expensive ones. And I was going through such cheap metal, and I needed one in a pinch real quick, so I stopped that at Harbor Freight. And the bit you just saw me drilling with is the exact same one I actually bought back then. So, even through thin metal, which is car metal. Now, if you're going through pretty thick gauge, it's a different story. But, yeah, they're, they're nice for going through plastic, so you get a round hole, which I'm not proving here. Um, let's see. Let's check. Hopefully I didn't damage that prong that it... Oh, is that the prong? Yep, I damaged it. Oh well. Let's find the hole it lines up with. There we go. Yeah, so if I bend these prongs, I'll be fine. I did damage that. I wonder how much that's gonna cause it to slide. Um, let's see, this is the mirror of it going on. this yeah it might be okay worst case scenario is I have two of these and I just get to start again okay uh, I'm gonna get a file A little more, but it's uh, it's getting there. Actually, those don't feel horrible. I should feel pretty good. I was gonna go with a red and a black, but considering the buttons are gonna be red here, I think I like doing the red and the black because it's gonna kind of match. It'll go with everything. So let's get this bottom smoothed out a bit. Round it out a bit, nothing will be smooth about it. I don't know, oh yeah, you can see it on there. It's uh, supposed to be tight like it is on the ends. It's a little more gapped in the middle, so I'll have to go a little bit more. <sighs> but considering I thought this was gonna turn out to be a sloppy mess, and it ain't done yet, it's turning out pretty good. <sighs> Part of me is wondering if I should have spaced, spaced them out more, but now that I have it, my fingers are going to come down. They're not going to be perfectly perpendicular with the controller. It's going to be kind of an angle, so I don't know. I think that's going to be pretty good. 
I'll have to make sure I get a link to the, the person I saw who did this to an NES controller. Mine, of course, the USB, if I didn't mention that before. Um, I'll have to make sure I get a link in the description because it was thanks to him that I thought of doing it. I actually had a PSP controller um, that I was thinking of actually putting up here and doing some weird thing like this. I even thought of gutting a uh, Wii Nunchuck, but this is working out much better. Let's see. Pretty sure I just need a common ground, so let's see how hard it is to scratch this up. I don't have any flux or anything, um, so I'm gonna have to be careful on this. I'm so shaky to begin with, it doesn't help. I actually have another channel called shakystudios.com. Uh, some of the videos say shaky films on it, and that's a boring story of how procrastinating I am and I lost that website and then they tried to sell it back to me for a crap load of money um, so it's shaky studios now but I pretty much just play games and put those up now it's hard enough trying to keep a regular schedule on pound buttons but there we go that should be good enough so I can put two contacts there and then what I'm thinking is This is the pad already, and there's kind of a line in there. I mean, I'm not going to use these buttons, but it would be cool if both both worked. I think I can. There's enough of a gap in there, and I'm actually I'm using um, network cable wire. I love this stuff. Um, I'm going to use that. So that should be thin enough to get under there. I think I just have to solder those up. Well, like the title thumbnail said, things don't always go well from the get-go. Um, I didn't have my core plugged in. I am when my battery went into, or my laptop went into saving mode. I, it's why I lost the beginning of my video. So I just restarted everything and, uh, well, I lost the uh, soldering, which is probably a good thing. Uh, you might notice I have another board here. I broke the uh, traces, uh, and they're so thin I couldn't recover them. Uh, somebody maybe could have. I couldn't. In fact, um, if I could, I would not have broke the traces on the bigger uh, traces. So that board went to crap. And since I had to grab another one, since I had two controllers, I figured I might as well redo this also. Um, I snapped off, when I was using the step down bit, I snapped off this little piece right here. There's a little nub, and what that did is that actually rested in a hole here and kept this kind of in position. Uh, there was a screw in here too, so chances are it maybe would have stayed in position, but since I had to open up another controller anyways, I decided to uh, take care of that because you can see on the step down bit went through here and it actually I did not use this on the second case I still kept the same backing and I just filed uh, filed the whole thing it's soft enough plastic um, where it wasn't too bad the best part was it actually worked for a game and then it stopped working and I was really bummed out because the buttons actually feel really good um, they actually match color wise it would have actually, in hindsight, you can see where they're not completely lined up with the start and uh, select. That would have been neat, but then it would have been getting close to the cable here, so that was okay anyways. Um, but, yeah, I actually really liked how it turned out. Uh, I did open it back up after it stopped working, and actually um, the B button, the soldering for, not the ground, um, ground was no problem, um, well, actually, I should back up. I ended up drilling. Instead of soldering right to the pad, I ended up popping a hole through there, coming up through the top, and then soldering it. And that was a lot cleaner. The only problem is I must have applied too much heat, uh, and it did pop this side. And not only by popping it did it disable the um, 
B button up here, it actually wrecked the B button down here too. It broke the trace altogether on this one too. So, which is a really bummer. If it wasn't for that, this actually worked perfectly. Um, as you can see, I can, I and I actually ended up not even using my index finger. It's easier to, if I can keep it on the camera, it's easier just to use these two fingers and it wasn't too bad. I was playing 1943, um, great game and I found that I was just pointing it towards the screen and I remapped this to be uh, left left to be up and right to be down and so on. So that way I was just kind of pointing it that way and I was just tapping the buttons and it worked out really well um, until it broke. So with all that said, I was kind of bummed. I went in my bin, tried looking for another one just to see what I could do because I am, like I said, I'm really happy how this turned out. I found a teensy board. So what I might do is I'm just going to maybe just fit a teensy board in here and instead of these being an A and B, map these to two different buttons and that way I can still use it as a one-handed controller. Um, but in the meantime, since I'm kind of running out of time to do that, while I was digging through the bin, I found my Luigi USB Super Nintendo controller and since I am going to do emulation instead of the Retron because I want everything on my laptop. Uh, because I'm just not going to be able to get around well until I recover a bit. I realized I can probably just uh, use this. It's not as good, but I can map the uh, left and right bumpers to um, A and B, and or if I'm doing Sega 1 and 2, and remap uh, the controller so it's pointing upwards too. And it actually works really well. It's not as comfortable as this. It is nice having these buttons right next to each other, but it did work. <laughs> so anyone with better soldering skills, feel free to do it. It really would work and maybe do the teensy idea. But like I said earlier, I'll put in the description um, where I got the idea. Uh, it works for someone else better. He used an actual Nintendo controller. I am using these cheap knockoff USB ones. Um, and I guess I could have done a regular Nintendo controller. I have enough of them. I just I feel weird about kayaking those open for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry, I couldn't really show you much on it. My computer died. Uh, you don't want to see me solder anyways. I can't solder. I never could. Um, shaky enough as it is. Uh, and I, but gameplay would have been nice on here. But maybe in a future one, maybe I'll do the teensy one and that one I know will work because much easier to solder those boards that are designed to be that way. Um, Otherwise, uh, have a good one. Thanks.